Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now this time around I want to jump into another Cricut based project and this time I want to work with what we're going to see on the background when we create some sort of an opening. So the goal here is to create something that looks like this. And what I want to be able to do is to use the Cricut maker to cut slices in my paper so I can pop things up a little bit and then we'll put some different colors behind it and reveal it and we'll come up with a really cool effect. Now in order to get this thing started we're gonna to have to jump over to the computer and do a little design work. Now as with our previous Cricut projects we're going to start in Cricut Design Space. Now Cricut Design Space has improved over the years. It's been a very difficult tool historically to use. Just it's buggy unfortunately and a lot of what they're really presenting here are templates that will help you with kind of pre-designed projects. It's not really as good for someone starting from scratch if we want to start a brand new project. For example we have some basic shapes that we can work with but there's not a lot of flexibility. You can either have these shapes or not have these shapes. And so by, by going and using a secondary tool, in our case, we want to use Inkscape. And Inkscape allows me to basically just have a platform where I can really start my design. And there are a lot of great tools that we can do in here, a lot more flexibility. And think of this, if you're familiar with a tool like Adobe Illustrator, it's very similar in the ways it allows us to work with vector images and create lines and things like that. Now, we're not going to go deep into how to use Inkscape for this tutorial because you don't need that kind of fun in your life. But I do want to show you a couple things that we should be able to do here. I want to be able to create something that's going to look like our flying geese. Basically, we have a series of triangles pointing one direction and then we have a series of triangles pointing back the other direction. And so the first thing I need to think about is how am I gonna create my triangle? And I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side and there's a little pen tool here. It's, it basically allows me to create Bezier curves. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on it to create a line. And then I'm gonna just move my line over to where I think my initial triangle should be. And then I'm gonna drop there. I'm gonna hit the enter key. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take this line and it's gonna save it as a a freestanding thing. So this is really going to be one half of the triangle that I want to create. And I only really want to create two sides of the triangle because I want to have a paper piece that the, this is going to be the hinge that things will fold on. So in essence, I only really want two cuts. So I'm going to take this triangle that I've created so far and I'm going to copy it by hitting my control C because I'm working on a PC and then control V to make a copy. You can also, of course, come up here if you want to use the edit tools to copy and paste and do all that. So I have two lines that are identical here, and I don't want these to be identical. In essence, I want this one here to flip. And up here in my tools at the top, there's a tool that allows me to flip objects vertically or horizontally. In this case, I want to be able to flip vertically. So I'm going to come in here and say, all right, now that I have basically the elements that I need, I can start to put them together. Now, what you do with your triangle is really up to you. I'm going to go for different sort of effects. I want the colors to pop through here. And in order for me to pull these pieces together, I might want to come over here to the left-hand side and grab the zoom tool and just allow me to click in this and just get to where I can really see what's going on. I'm going to grab my arrow tool here at the top of the tool so I can select this line. And I'm going to try to bring these lines together perfectly. Now one of the things I might not be able to see very well is how aligned things are, especially over here on the butt ends. So if I come over here on the left hand side, there's a little ruler here. And if I click on this rule area and pull out, it's actually going to allow me to pull a guideline out that I can put. If I bring it up here, I can see how well the different ends of my triangle are aligned with that line. So they're pretty even. I'm not unhappy with that. And I can bring this down a tiny little bit if I want to just kind of squeeze it in here. By the way, and not to get too deep in here, but if you use modifier keys, in this sense, the different keys on your keyboard along with your cursor key, for example, if I hit the shift key, I jump up in huge increments, okay? If I hit the alt key, I jump in very tiny increments. And if I don't hit any modifier key, kind of an interim state. So if you want to come in here and fine tune things by hitting, the, in this case, the alt key on a PC and your cursor keys, you can, you can come in and really get things pretty precise. But I'm pretty happy with what's going to happen here. This is going to serve my purposes overall. Now I'm going to zoom back out. One of the things I actually should have done before we got this deep into it. And by the way, I'm just going to go and, and hit my other mouse button to zoom back out. And that will get us to where we need to get to. All right. 
Now, one of the things I should have thought about before I set things up is how big is the document that I'm working on? And this, of course, is going to affect how big what we're creating and how well it's going to fit on the paper we're going to be using in our Cricut. So I can do this very easily by going up to the File menu here at the top. And down here, there's a place called Document Properties. And what I want to simply do here is match the size of my document to the size of the paper. Right now, it's currently converting to millimeters. I'm going to bring this up to inches. And the width of my paper is going to be 11. So let me put that in. And the height is going to be 14 inches. So we'll work with the inches there. And once we have that set, our paper has redesigned and it's going to make it a lot easier for us to make sure we have the right size and whatever we're working on here. Now again, what I can do with these different items once I've created them is if I select it by simply making sure I have the arrow tool up here in the upper left hand corner selected and just drag a marquee around it, I can stretch it out a little bit, make it a little bit Taller, you know, I, I have a little bit of granular control depending on what I want to be able to do here. And so I'm going to try to just create something that's very much a, a, a equilateral triangle. That's kind of my objective here. And so there's uh, one thing I can do. And again, I'm going to kind of see how things were. I want to make five of these across. So I'm going to go and select that. I'm going to hit Control C and Control V to be able to, once again, make a copy of this thing. And I'm going to just kind of bring it over like this and just get a sense of how well these guys will work together. And again, if I want to get a, a, a line to work with, if I come up here to the upper uh, menu uh, ruler bar, I should say, come down here, I can also get a sense of how well these things are lined on their different axes. I just want to be able to make sure things are pretty much evened up. They look pretty good. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to copy both of these elements now since I've already done some of the hard work. And again, copying and pasting. And again, if I hold the shift key down, I can pop through things a little bit faster. And I'll get up there. There we go. And let's just make sure we can get these equidistant. I'm going to eyeball this. I can certainly come in and measure it. And sometimes you can just, you know, click off of it to get a sense of how well things look when you do that. I can see the gap here and the gap here are bigger, but not as big as the gap here, right? So if I come over here and just say, let's get some more gap in there. Again, I can kind of just eyeball this and say, okay, needs a little bit more, maybe two more like that. And how are we doing? Uh, it's pretty close. I think one more just to be uh, overly cautious here. And we should have what we need. Yeah, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, and the last thing, and again, how many do I want? Do I want five? Do I want six? Well, if I, uh, if I just grab these last two one more time and I'm copy and paste these, I'm just going to bring these up into position and we can always peel things off if we don't want that many. But I think this will actually work out nice for what we're doing. And, right, and again, if I want to just get a sense of how well these all fit together, it looks like I have too big a gap here. So, getting closer. And it looks like one more. And again, there are probably better ways of doing this. Uh, I don't spend all my time working in, in Inkscape, so I don't really, uh, I'm not mastered the tools to any great degree. I, I get enough, I get enough to get what I need done. All right, now again, I want to think about how these cutouts are going to look on my paper. And so if I were to kind of bring these in, I, let me, and by the way, if you want to put your rulers away, you just drag these guidelines back over to where they came from. Just put them, tuck them in there, you're good to go. And so if I want to come in here and say, okay, this is kind of how I want this to appear on my final project, that'll be nice. Now that looks okay. Let's say I want to be able to deal with the second line of these triangles, but I want them pointed in the other direction. So again, if I come and grab all of these and copy them and then paste them, let me bring them down here. And again, I'm going to hold my shift key down just to make it easier to kind of move things around. I, uh, again, I'm going to grab my, uh, my guideline over here from the left-hand side, just because I want to make sure that I know how well these things work together. So I can see that the new line I've created here is not quite lined up with the other ones. There we go. And that uh, looks pretty good now, but they're still pointing in the wrong direction. And uh, actually something just happened. I'm not sure what it is. Looks like I didn't grab everything when I moved it, which is my bad. There we go. Make sure you don't break the lines. Now, if I grab this second row, which is currently pointing in the direction uh, that I don't want it to be pointing. I want it to be pointing in the opposite direction. I can select this. And once again, from up here in the, uh, in the menus at the top, I can flip this object horizontally. So look at that. Very quickly, I now have my, uh, my geese, as it were, flying in a different direction.
Now, one of the things I might need to think about is what kind of, in, you know, interrelationship do I want to have? Do I want to have the, you know, these kind of triangles on top of one another? Or maybe I want to do something where these are offset. So maybe I want to bring it back like this and have the uh, kind of the center of, of maybe this triangle starts there. And again, I might need to think about how to pull these things back over so that they're going to align on the page in a, in a way that's going to work for everybody. All right? No right answer. No right answer. What we're going to do here is what we think is going to work. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with coming in and doing this and saying, all right, that's not as nice as I wanted it to look. Let me try a slightly different configuration. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, uh, once again, I'm going to select everything again. I'm going to copy and paste it. And let's uh, let's come on down here. Oh, I'm going to need my probably guideline again. Keep putting it away, but I really still need it here. And there we go. We'll put it right there. And let me... Just get these guys back over here. And I'm really just repeating the pattern. And do I, it looks like I need to come up just a little bit. Again, I'm kind of looking at the distance between these lines, this gap in here, and just eyeballing it. I think it's pretty darn close though. Actually, I think I can come down one. Come down one more. And at the end of the day, you know what? No one's ever gonna notice if it's off by a, a few pixels. Trust me on that. All right, and uh, finally, let's see how much we're doing. We're working with 14 inches here. I'm going to grab everybody that we've created so far. I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste this. And once again, let me uh, just work on getting this moved down. And now over to the left-hand side. That's why we hold the Shift key down. It does go so much faster when we do this. There we are. Looks pretty good. And let's get it up here a little bit, too, again. Close that gap. And that looks about right. Looks about right. All right, and we filled up our paper. Now again, we don't have to go with this. We can certainly say, well, I don't want this to, to go all the way down here. I'm gonna get rid of this bottom row, leave a, a little bit of white space at the bottom. I can just go and select that and hit the delete key and away it goes. But again, I'm kind of happy with what we're doing here. I think it's going to be interesting to have the offset. Who knows? It, it, may, be a, it may be a wonderful experiment <laughs> that we're going to come back and say, huh, there, there might be a better way to do that. Maybe six is too many. Maybe we only want five. I'm not going to necessarily know until I get in there and do it. So, But that's really the design that I'm looking for. Now, again, I'm working in Inkscape and able to come in and use these tools to create the different lines that I want. How do I get this over to Cricut Maker? Well, in this case, I need to come up here and I need to save my work. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to do a Save As. And uh, I'll call this something uh, like uh, Zigzag. That's kind of what it is. It's going to save it as a .svg file format, which is what I want to do here. And I'm going to click on the Save button. And so now it has saved it to my hard drive. And so the work I have that I've been working on here in Inkscape is done. I want to return back over now to Cricut. And uh, I'm going to come in here and uh, I'm going to, I'm building a new project. And the way I'm going to build this is I'm going to use the stuff we just created and import it in. So I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side where it says upload and give that a click. And it's going to say, where do you want to upload this? Let me get rid of some of the stuff that I have in here. So my test files. And I'm going to come out and say, all right, I want to go and I want to upload an image. And it's going to say, you can drag the file or go, let's go find it. So I put this in my documents. And if I go to my documents folder and I have something called zigzag right there. And uh, there it is. It's showing me what it's going to look like when it comes in. Now, if I hit continue here and I'm going to and bring this in, I can give it a name. I'm going to call it zigzag. That works fine for me. It'll be the name of the project if I need to look it up in the future. And here it is. Now, I'm looking at this thinking, you know what? This would look good. I think I'm ready to send this to the Cricut Banker. And if I roll up here to the upper right-hand corner and click on that Make button, what's going to happen? Well, first of all, it's going to save the project. But watch what happens when we come in here. I'm going to call this Zigzag and click on Save. And it's going to say, how do you want to load this? Now, we're making this as a 14-inch by 11-inch. And I'm actually using it on a mat. And my mat is going to be a little over 12 inches. So I'm going to use my uh, my two-foot mat, my 12 inches by 24 inches. Not that it hugely uh, matters here. But uh, yeah, it will because it needs to go down below the 12-inch mark most likely. And click on Confirm. Now, what it's done is it's trying to be as efficient as possible in the use of my paper. And it said, oh, hey, you know what? You need to make all these lines cut. We can make all these lines cut for you. Uh, 
using the minimum amount of paper using this configuration. And you're like, wait a second, what happened to my lovely design? So that's not working out. So here's one of the things you absolutely need to be aware of. I, I canceled that. When you come back over here, you wanna make sure that everything is selected, okay? And then down here, in the lower right hand side, there's something we're basically setting things up. You wanna click on this thing that says attach. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take this object such as it is, laid out the way we want it to be laid out, and it's gonna say, oh, you want me to transfer it the way it is. And now if I come back up and click on the make button, it's gonna say, ah, I see what you need, okay? Now it's coming in here. Again, we have a roughly 11 inches in here. And what I can choose to do here is I can really choose to say, hey, why don't I come in here and uh, align this? Now I'm not sure why it's not showing my 14 inches, but that's okay. It, uh, it may not have remembered, or maybe we still need to put that in material size. So over here on the left-hand side, I can change this and say, let's make this 12 by 24 inches. That, not that we're going to use all of it, but again, this is 14 inches. So I'm going to come down a little bit and I'm going to say, let's, uh, let's kind of center within the 11, uh, 11 inch marks. Okay. We'll make it line like that. There we go. Pretty close. And then uh, we'll have a little bit of white space down below it. Might uh, be a cool effect. I'll bring it down. And again, I can, I can tweak this over time. Right? This may not be the only time I get a chance to come in here and do this. And there it is. Now, what I want to be able to do next is I'm going to click Continue. And I'm going to be sending this now to my Cricut cutter. My Cricut maker is going to be able to cut this thing out. And so, give it a second here. It's going to say, what do you want to do? Now, I've already measured out my paper. I have a piece of 11 inch by 14 inch paper that's already on the mat and ready to go. And it is a heavy watercolor paper. So we want to tell the machine just to, how much pressure to put on the knife to get through with this heavy paper. So that's going to be fine. And then it says, okay, do you have everything? Do you have your blades in? Everything ready to go? Already set up. So the next thing I need to do now is go back over to the Cricut Maker and get ready to put the paper in. All right, so here's my mat. It is ready to go. It's an adhesive mat, by the way. These are this is heavy duty. Uh, it, it, things will stick to this beautifully. And what I'm doing here is I've uh, I've taken this piece of paper, 14 by inches by 11 inches. I've mounted it to my mat. And the next thing I need to do is I need to get it ready to go into my Cricut maker. And there are a couple of different slots right here. You can see them in the corners here and here. And what I want to be able to do is just get my mat in there. And I'm going to push this flashing arrow button, which is going to draw my paper in initially. Now because everything is already set on the computer, what it's going to allow me to do is to say, okay now let's transfer the design and the signal from the computer over to Cricut by clicking on the Cricut button. What it's going to do is it's going to draw the paper in now and it's going to measure and make sure it has everything it needs and then it's going to start the cutting process. Excellent. So now that it's done, I can press the double arrow again and it'll bring it all the way out. Now what I have is again my piece of paper, but if I peel it off of uh, my backing, you can start to see uh, exactly what we've been able to create here. Let me just show. So there are all these different cut flaps now that can lift up as I need to. Let me show you on a prototype that I created that's already been opened up a little bit. Again, opening these flaps and the advantage of this if we're working with a backing color, which we will be, is that now we can mount our color behind each one of these apertures, these openings that we've created, and we'll be able to see the color peeking through. So that's the objective. Now, I want to do that. I want to lay the colors in before I actually start opening things up. So let's, uh, let's take a look at how to do that. All right, next up, I want to be able to get some colors, of course, in the back here. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to grab one of my, uh, my sheets here, and I'm working with the, the bright pink to start with here. Why not go crazy? And I want to create a strip. And I'm going to grab uh, my quilting ruler here and just get a nice, good size strip. I don't want to be too wide. I think it's going to be a little over an inch. That's my estimate here. And I can always trim things down if it, uh, it's not what I want. But what I want to be able to do is figure out how to put this so that this will be the kind of the color behind my aperture here. So if I come in here and let me put it on this side here. And I can see, again, with this in place, that if I open up my aperture, you can see that there, my color is shining through. I can actually show you with the top camera a little bit better, right? 
So that's kind of what I want to be able to do. Now, one of the challenges with this, totally letting you know, and I've learned this the hard way, is if I slap a lot of glue on this guy, it may just end up gluing the flaps closed, and that's not what we want to be able to do. So I want to take my glue stick, and what I want to do is really just paint the glue in the places where I don't mind the paper sticking to it, but avoid, for example, the places I would. So I can come in here and say, let's glue that in there. We'll glue between, we'll glue anything that's basically not the flap. How about that? So we can kind of do one of these and be a little bit more precise. Yeah, it takes a little bit of extra work to uh, kind of do this but it's gonna make a big difference when we put our paper in here. And so now when I take my pink sheet and lay it across, again, kind of smooth that out. It's hopefully not gonna affect the opening of the flaps in the future, because that'd be a bad thing. And I wanna be able to, of course, figure out how to open these guys up so I can let my color out. And we'll get a chance to kind of work on that. I'll show you some different methodologies. But there we go. So that is something we can do in this area. Now there might be a couple of other things we can do. We'll have to think ahead on how we might get the effect we want. Let's uh, let's do the same thing for the next colors here. And I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use the green, I guess. So I'm going to use the green here as my next color. Let me get that trimmed up to size. So there we are. Now I'm going to I'm going to start opening these things up. And again, I'm just using my fingers. I'm going to just kind of put a finger behind it. To poke it up a little bit and I'm going to take this flap and I'm going to lift it. Now there are different methodologies. One of the things we could do with these flaps when we cut them in the first place is we could make it a little bit easier to pull up or create a gap or some sort. We'll play with around with some some of these different options in future projects. But the goal overall is to be able to get these flaps lifted a bit so that we can let some of the color behind shine through. Okay. So let's do the same thing down here with our blue level. There we go. Come on. So now I'll mention one thing about from a framing standpoint of obviously you can't put this in just a standard frame. This is going to need some sort of a, a deeper frame. You're going to need to have something either a shadow box style frame or something that's going to at least give it a, a little bit, right? What do we need? About an inch or so so that these don't uh, bump into the glass. But anyway, it's a pretty cool project. And uh, we're going to be creating a few more of these. I have a few more ideas of things I want to share with you. And maybe I'll come back and I'll, I'll modify my cut design and see if that gives me more of the, the color show through that I'm looking at. Type stenciled projects. Again, more of these in the future, but that's what I have for you today. Thanks again for being with me. And by the way, if you're not a subscriber, we do this every single week. We do all sorts of mixed media things, including cricket and cutting and, and pasting and collage and paint. And, you know, if you can make it, we'll do it. And we love to be able to share these ideas with you. So please hit that subscribe button down below and we'll be notified. Uh, we'll let you know when we drop a new video, which is every Friday morning. And uh, we're happy to be able to do that. And again, if you can hit that like button on the way out, uh, that helps us out an awful lot. It helps YouTube to show off our, our videos to other people, and we like to be able to share. Anyway, thanks so much for dropping by. That's what I have for today. I'll talk to you real soon.